Jimmy's Journal. Thank you for joining us today. This is the first installment of a super deep delving into the history of Tuskegee. We are with one of the greatest historians in Tuskegee and we're going to let him share with you the history that he has of Tuskegee. Not only is he a bastion of knowledge, a steel trap, tell you anything that's going on about Tuskegee, he's also a personal friend. I've known him more than 25 years. So without any further delay, I'm going to let you talk to Jimmy Johnson on Jimmy Johnson's journal, Journal Online. Welcome to Jimmy Johnson's journal, where we will take a trip throughout the historical valley of Tuskegee and surrounding areas and the connections that it has. To get to Jimmy's journal, I had to go through a process of almost 20 years of studying the history of Tuskegee, Macon County, the Greek Indians, finding out from people, recording, and documenting the ideas that this was an oasis, as it was called, for the Negro people, a lighthouse to the world, as it was called, for the Negro people. And for the colors, it was a mecca. You had everything you needed in Tuskegee. Tuskegee Institute. When I started out, born and raised here at Johnny Andrew Hospital and educated at Children's House, went to the high school, and all these were Booker T. Washington's principles, his era, it was the Washingtonian period, and it became the last of, as we found out years later, because they changed everything around, closed things down, and eliminated Tuskegee Institute, the once proud heritage, from the uh, walls of the buildings. So now we're looking at a community that went from an economic, major economic development to a major downfall. The downfall came eh, 20, 30 years, and then it got worse once the city got involved, and then it got worse once the community really stopped caring about Tuskegee Institute. Now we're at the process of our life of the crossroads, where we're going to see if this can be magnified. I learned through the studying and the history of papers how it was just, mm, I had not planned on this now. As I started learning, Mr. Webb, who is my grandmother's brother, was here for 50 years. He was like Booker T. Washington's wife's driver. So he went to a lot of events. He was able to capture a lot of documents and bring them and save them. That was the main thing. He saved them. As I checked on the documents, and it took three years to even get to them. But as I checked on the documents, I would find historical stories that were not being told or the truth on stories that were being told in the wrong manner. I wanted to tell the truth, the truth about Tuskegee. So those became my guiding paths to where I needed to get to. Now, once I found out these papers, I started chronologically ordering, putting things through, and the next thing I knew, I was making copies scanning in and finding a way to organize and save these documents for future references. Now my background of growing up in Tuskegee was very interesting because I lived next door to P.H. Polk for 12 years. For those of you that know Polk, no explanation is needed. For those of you who don't know Polk, because of Polk we have the pictures and the history of our community going back a hundred years. Which is a blessing if you'll think about in doing so because this was the most prime time of the community. So in doing so, Polk had to start from scratch. He was the first student in the photography class. He was the first student that graduated. As soon as he graduated, they made him the teacher. Polk was the kind of guy who took pictures, people, buildings, and events. And in doing so, Polk preserved the history of Tuskegee. I learned from P.H. Polk. I learned from Mr. Glover, I learned from Mr. Ellaby, all these gentlemen, and John Brown, who had the drive-in. I learned cameras and Cub Scouts from Lyman Jeffries, Jimmy Dixon, and Hoppy Logan, Charles Griner. I learned cameras from uh, the Center of Photography and started coming in when I got to the VA hospital. I think Mr. Mule Ellaby, Motel Ellaby, was a teacher then. He had helped me out a lot. And I was doing 8 and 16 millimeter camera repair, film, repair, cinematography work of uh, taking these cameras 
and making sure that the patients got to see some of the most, how do they say, latest run movies, the first ones out. All this led to me joining the Navy. I was a submarine. I was a submarine for three years. Yes, I worked cameras, which led me to Vegas, where I worked bigger, more cameras. The cameras were changing at a drastic rate, but I still stayed with the uh, older cameras and in the early days of the video cam. But cameras were changing at a drastic rate <coughs> from being one principal layout to being how they are today. You have a multi-choice of cameras that you can pick from. Polk would take one picture at a time. That picture had to be done right. He had to come back, develop it, stretch it, blow it up. Today we can take a thousand pictures with a camera before we even have to unplug it. And this is something that is really, really changing the uh, photo video image. Tuskegee can be at the head of, we need a media school that medias people. Camera, editing, background, sets, you got all type of things you have in this business and resources that we as a community, a university, are not taking advantage of. <coughs> and these advantages are going to be lost on some talented individuals. So this needs to be taken advantage of. Jimmy's Journal is going to give you the ride through the Creek history and Native American Creeks. It's going to come back around to the antebellum period of the Civil War. We're also going to go down into the areas where you will find Lewis Adams, the mulatto who already had a school. He needs someone as a principal of that school. Booker T. Washington, who was the founder of Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute, Tuskegee Institute, Tuskegee State School. Lewis Adams already had a school. Booker became principal. Then there was Carver, the Carver era where here's one man who can come up with three, four hundred uh, items from one item that is grown and commercially grown. How about that? And of course the airmen will be part of it. We'll do a little on civil rights, syphilis study. We're going to take and venture out each week to hunt down another episode of Jimmy's Journal. So we will find you, we will make it work, okay? Back in a minute with Jimmy's Journal. And don't forget, Sponsors. We are always looking for sponsors and thank you for the sponsors we have.